What is it that keeps our soul enchained to the surface of earth? It is hope. This is the story of a dream. A dream of bringing hope to those who are in desperate need of it. It's about a boy who lost his family only to find a new one in Ghana. It is about those who try to help. It is about deprived community children and the way in which their lives have been changed. My name is Marshall and I like to play basketball and if I grow up I'll be a basketball player. Article 31 of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child stipulates that states shall recognise the right of the child to rest and leisure, to engage in play and recreational activities appropriate to the age of the child and to participate freely in cultural life and the arts. But to truly understand the degree of help needed, you have to witness the lives and surroundings of the children. Let's take a quick journey through Nima. Most girls in Ghana need to start working early in their lives. Mostly this involves selling food or other commodities which they carry around on their heads. Therefore, they don't spend any time in school and the majority of them have no chance of working on their own dreams. The idea therefore came about to get some of them to take pictures of their surroundings for a calendar, which was then sold in Canada. The money was used to pay their school fees and other necessities. An ambassador volunteer assisted them in taking pictures, whilst they guided him through their home, Nemo. And whilst the girls are ambitiously taking pictures, one is astonished by their rundown surroundings. Aside from the poverty, there lies a relief in the light that dips Nima in the colour of hope. The Abbasidi Court is a donation by Tigo, a mobile communications firm with its headquarters in Luxembourg. Even though it's a bit crumbly these days, there are a lot of children, adolescents and grown-ups in the afternoon and most of them stay until the late evening when the sky is conquered by myriads of bats. Every day there is a training for one of the Abbasidi teams and also one for the little kids, which is mostly undertaken by volunteers, though it is not the easiest thing to do. During their training, the children show off their ambition by taking shot after shot after shot. The girls' team is a group of youngsters who are not afraid to compete with the boys, and they are really quite confident. But let's listen to what the girls themselves have to say. We are lady soldiers. Why do we call you lady soldiers? Because we are brave and strong. Because what boys can do, girls can do. Girls can do. Because some of the boys, when they see we don't know, we're looking at you as if we are something hard. But now I've come to our The boys and the girls, we play together and we love together and we share things together. That's what's hey, let's clap for her. There are also a lot of competition games and the kids are taken there by a trotro, a little bus which is not too famous for its comfort but for its efficient use of space. 
With obvious excitement, the boys reach the court and prepare for the battle. They did lose this fight, but it only makes them stronger and even more ambitious. And through the loss rises a new strength and the ultimate will to succeed. In the final chapter, it is shown what these kids are really made of. This is made clear through Adam's story. Adam is a young, passionate Sudanese boy with a great love of life and people in general. Think about how you would feel if you were to lose your whole family. Not just leaving them behind, curious of what they are doing and if they are happy in this moment. Think about how you would feel if they were all gone forever. This is what happened to Adam, who lost his entire family when out of the darkness some dastardly men came to burn his house and kill his family in Sudan. He then shows how he came to Ghana and the time that it took him to do so, as he fled with a friend's help in a little car, not knowing what his imminent future would bring. But he made it. And living in Ghana, he now learns how to speak English, goes to school with the help of Abbasidi, and has managed to create a new life with many new and wonderful friends. Today, Adam is a grown man and is in charge of coaching the refugee camp children. There he meets others with whom he can share his story. My name is Adam Abdullah. My age is 17. I'm from Sudan. What do you want to become in future? So there you have it. A story full of pain and yet full of hope.